You're listening to the Radio Ammo Breakfast, only on Kiwi. Because we're going to talk TV with um, Hamish Coleman Ross, Hamish CR on Twitter, uh, Throng TV, throng.co.nz forward slash TV. Hello to you, Hamish. Good morning, Wemo. How are you? Very well. Very well indeed. Um, I did manage to see you actually a couple of times. Um, we did. Press yep. the flesh, so to speak. Both, and they're sort of media related as well, which, yeah. was, um, which was nice to see you. Uh, and, out and there. In fact, inside the TVNZ studios. We were inside the TVNZ studios. We had the, uh, the Media 7 uh, Christmas special. That's right. Um, on Thursday, that was the final episode for the year, and that was really fantastic. Because it's a smooth operation they run there, isn't it? It's a very good show, you know. Um, probably not enough people watch it. It is on TVNZ Seven. People go, "What? What's that?" Ten past nine on a <laughs> on a Thursday, but um, it's funny because it's a show that probably isn't the biggest ratings wonder. But yeah, it's so informative, and yeah. it it's watched very widely within the industry, which I think is. Probably why uh, it's as successful and, and loved by the industry as it is. Mm. Great analysis piece. You've got Russell Brown there, of course, who's a guest on here all the time, and Simon Pound, who um, does, and Jose Barboza, who does a whole he- a bunch of stuff for them now as well. Yep. And they really are a very, very good team. Um, it's a great show. What, what I'm amazed, because um, when I'm watching sort of um, what goes on kind of behind the scenes, is that um, it's quite a, you know, I mean, it's a very, it's a very nice set that um, Media 7 has, but it's, um, it's constructed, and then as soon as the show's over, it's whipped off, it's gone. That's, That's what they do. That's in um, the Magical Studio 3. And sort of if there's uh, temporary shows that, you know, are filmed inside TVNZ, it's Studio 3 that they go into and they get whipped in and whipped out of. And, you know, I, I've, I go along to the show quite regularly. But I think, you know, having a media na- analysis show mm. and the kind of guests that they get on as well, like, you know, they get a really high calibre of guests. Um, it's fantastic. Yeah. Make sure you check out their New Year's special as well, which will be on New Year's night if you've got nothing to do. Um, Lucy Lawless uh, is, is one of the guests on there and huh. with Pam Corkery. Yeah. Um, having the gender debate on the other side, they had uh, such people as a former listener editor and uh, Mikey Havoc. It's uh, it's a very interesting show. It very was a lot cool. Of fun. Yeah. And and, and it, as we, as you were just saying, it is one of those shows that um, that is hidden away on, on on some of these smaller channels, and that's where you would do find some some gems. Don't you? Yeah, and it seems that smaller channels are starting to really come out with their own uh, formats and their own interesting bits and bobs. Um, and the ones that I wanted to talk about, a couple have big, huge crossovers with radio. Um, over the weekend, you might have seen that Carol Hirschfeld, who has gone over and it's now head of programming um, over at Mary TV, has rolled out their new news program that's going to yes. be coming out. So um, Because um, Eye to Eye was cancelled, wasn't it? That's right. Eye to Eye with Willie Jackson on TV1, which again, you know, arguably was one of those little gems that was hidden away. Um, Willie manages, as a presenter, manages to get a response out of people mm. that you know very few presenters can uh, do. Um, sort of remind me of Holmes. Remember when Holmes was on? At the end of every episode, it kind of just fell apart, and it was just people kind of talking over the top of each other. Yeah. When that went, I went, oh, you know, thank goodness, because you know I was really, I was over that. I, it was a bit too much at um, twenty past seven and on a, on a Tuesday night. Yeah. And now I find myself really missing it. Like, I find Campbell Live and Close Up a little bit too pedestrian. Mm. I want that kind of passion there. I want to see my politicians kind of being unsettled a little bit more than what they are. Yeah. Um, I think they get a really easy ride in the media now um, as far as the one-on-one interview situation goes. Yeah, yeah. And so to see that they've got Willie from, of course, Radio Live um, back in there, mm-hmm. I think could be very, very interesting. And being produced by Carol Hirschfeld. Uh, I reckon you could have an exceptionally good show rolling out there. So that will be rolling out next year on Mary TV. Okay. Anything else catching your eye in that uh, Yeah, in that realm? The, the other one, um, one of the reasons I'm actually a little late in today was yeah. we had the first night of filming last night for the new Mike King series. Oh, yes. Uh, called The Nutters Club. Now, he's got a radio show of the same night. He has a radio show of the same name called The Nutters Club. Mm. Um, and this is uh, a mental health show. Mike's had a really public battle with... Um, Depression and alcohol and drug addiction, which he said were symptoms of of his depression. Mm. But what he's done is he he set up this radio show and opened up the dialogue. Um, and enough people have taken note that Mary TV commissioned a 13 episode um, series. Well, by way of New Zealand on air. Thanks, guys. Um, and yeah, we I was there last night at the first taping of the first episode. Um, how does that work? How do they how do they translate radio to to TV? I mean, I know how it works here for the show. Sure. But- 
Sure. But but, to, but but for terrestrial TV, I don't know. How does this work? Well, they, they have a guest and then they have callers. I mean, it's a 20 minute, uh, 22 minute show, so commercial half hour. Um, but then they, I believe they'll be intersplicing some other pieces, so I believe they'll be intersplicing some comedy, et cetera. But hey, look, I think you're going to have to wait to see when it rolls out. Yeah. The big thing about the, the Mike King show is I think, you know, for everybody, it, it's such a turnaround from Mike's. Um, public persona as we knew him sort of five years ago you know he was on just about every reality TV show you could imagine mm. and now to be doing something with you know such depth um, you might think is a, a far call but you know in reality it, it's it's amazing and it's incredible the number of people um, that uh, want to get involved and it has had just had recently an international push last weekend on the BBC in the UK a documentary was screened called Mind Games mm. Depression in Professional Sport and one of the guests was John Kerwin oh. um, who actually made mention at the conclusion of the show um, he said hey there's a guy in New Zealand called Mike King um, who is running a radio show called The Nutters Club and I told him about Frank Bruno the former heavyweight boxing champion who of course is a Brit about um, that you know that Frank Bruno had been open about his depression so why couldn't Mike and then it cut to Frank Bruno in raptures of laughter and this has seen the uh, Nutters Club Facebook page and their Twitter account just be hit yeah. by UK people that are interested in this already so Potentially, we we've got the the makings of an, of something international here. Um, yeah, cause and I, apparently a world first. Well, it, it would be, I, I'd imagine. Uh, and I don't know of any radio in New Zealand that has been able to break internationally. No, like no. And so I think that's been you know very very interesting. Um, in so much as you know they're doing a show about depression, and apparently nobody else in the world is doing this. Mm. So that's going to be on Maori Television, I think April next year. So okay. they've just started filming that now. Um, and then you've got Prime um, have just uh, have been started filming a new gardening show as well. Um, and they take a family and um, over the course of this family will make a garden. Yeah, now that's with um, with the editor of NZ Gardener. That is right, yeah. yeah. So basically it's NZ Gardener showing, you know, the application yeah. of making a garden. This this had to happen, didn't it? Because Absolutely. Because it's, 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 yep. uh, 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 we haven't had a gardening show on New Zealand TV no, for a long for time. A long time, not since Maggie Barry. Yeah, and I mean, again, Maggie Barry, now radio talent. So it, it was just interesting to to see that that's happened. But last week we talked about New Zealand's hottest home baker. Yeah, you know, and and I'd love, and as I said, I loved it because it's this kind of kitschy, you know, camp TV show. And then I kind of love that we're doing the same thing with the gardening now as well. You know, it's a really Kiwi kind of concept. You know, we're going to make a garden, and we're going to show you how to make your garden and what to do. And maybe just, again, we've strayed too far looking at international formats yeah. rather than just concentrating on those little Kiwiisms that um, actually do make great television. Tell you what, now we need, now we need a, um, a home brew show. A home brew show? Yeah. I could go down with that, actually. Yeah, you are doing home brew at the moment, too, aren't <laughs> I am. you? I've just put my second batch in over the weekend. Uh, you know what? You should get a prop in for that. <laughs> the home brew show, you know? <laughs> Maybe we won't schedule it on Mary TV straight after the Mike King Nutters Club, because a lot of it is about <laughs> alcohol and addiction. Yeah, but yeah. yeah we, can, uh, we can definitely put it, chuck it in somewhere. Where would you put it on? Um, oh, I guess... Uh, Prime, well, Prime, 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 I think. Prime do seem to like these sorts, sorts of shows. I'm, Although I think I think we do need more uh, locally made content on six and seven, I, and I don't think everything on on six is generally locally made, but it's a lot of its reruns. I mean, we need fresh stuff. Yeah, I mean, there's another great show on six now that you bring it up, um, and it's the Department of Conservation um, worker, yeah. and and she just rocks around. And it's it's a kids show, but you know shows all the awesome things that you can do out in the bush in New yeah. Zealand. I always thought to myself, you know, it's just a really great show. You know, they've always said that one of the best departments you could work in in New Zealand is the Department of Conservation and be, yeah. what, what do they call them? Um, the, the guys who work out in the field? The forest rangers and stuff? Yeah, you're like a, a, a dock ranger. Yeah. That must be an amazing job. Oh, yeah. And, you know, that TV show shows to me that, you know, they're quite interesting people well, and they you, get to interact with interesting people. You'd only be doing it if you love it, if you love the job. Absolutely. Uh, also news over the weekend that there are possibly more redundancies going down at TVNZ. Yeah, um, and that, I guess, is a concern to certain departments. Um, I had heard talk that in-house production was being cut back huge, hugely. Um, I think that's a shame um, if that is going to occur uh, because... I think in-house production has been what's defined TVNZ as a great broadcaster anywhere mm. in the world. Yeah. Um, you know, the, the, some of the shows that we've seen come out have all been quite experimental in, in the past, but it, essentially they've done really well, and I think it's a shame to see that that's going to get cut back even further. 
And but if they're trimming the fat with um, suits and PR, yeah, you know that'd be great. But I think Paul Henry's probably keeping a lot of poor, um, a lot of PR people in good employment these days. <laughs> That's very true. You know, I don't think uh, that guy's not going to stop at all. Yeah, and no, no real official word out of TVNZ about what they're going to do about his comments. No, um, there is usually about a five to six week um, process that people can make complaints in and I think you know they're just going to ride that out which will take them right into the Christmas break yeah uh, but you know I don't think we're going to see anything really happen Paul like I said last week I didn't I didn't think there was anything amazing about his comments or I mean I understand why certain people would be getting upset about it but at the end of the day I, I think you know he you put a man in that position what do you expect him to do people probably forget some interesting facts about Paul and so much as he is he's fiercely independently wealthy yeah um, and also too he has a huge journalistic uh, background um, you know he's done a lot of foreign cor- foreign correspondence work and was a huge veteran of talkback radio before he got into doing the breakfast show so I've always sort of thought you know there's an incredibly talented guy there with 